resolved that it is our greatest wish and inclination as well as interest to continue our connection with and dependence upon the British government. But though we are its subjects, we will use every means which heaven hath given us to prevent our becoming its slaves. Resolved that there is a premeditated design and system formed and pursued by the British ministry to introduce an arbitrary government into His Majesty's American dominions, to which end they are artfully prejudicing our sovereign and inflaming the minds of our fellow subjects in Great Britain by propagating the most malevolent falsehoods, particularly that there is an intention in the American colonies to set up for independent states, endeavoring at the same time by various acts of violence and oppression by sudden and repeated dissolutions of our assemblies whenever they presume to examine the illegality of ministerial mandates or deliberate on the violated rights of their constituents and by breaking in upon the American charters to reduce us to a state of desperation and dissolve the original compact by which our ancestors bound themselves and their posterity to remain dependent upon the British crown which measures, unless effectually counteracted, will end in the ruin both of Great Britain and her colonies. Resolved, that the several acts of Parliament for raising a revenue upon the people of America, without their consent, the erecting new and dangerous jurisdictions here, the taking away our trials by jury, the ordering persons upon criminal accusations to be tried in another country than that in which the fact is charged to have been committed, the act inflicting ministerial vengeance upon the town of Boston, and the two bills lately brought into Parliament for abrogating the charter of the province of Massachusetts Bay, and for the protection and encouragement of murderers in the said province, are part of the above-mentioned iniquitous system that the inhabitants of the town of Boston are now suffering in the common cause of all British America and are justly entitled to its support and assistance, and therefore that a subscription ought immediately to be opened and proper persons appointed in every county in this colony to purchase provisions and consign them to some gentleman of character in Boston to be distributed among the poorer sort of the people there. Resolved that we will cordially join with our friends and brethren of this and the other colonies in such measures as shall be judged most effectual for procuring a redress of our grievances and that upon obtaining such redress if the destruction of the tea at boston be regarded as an invasion of private property we shall be willing to contribute towards paying the east india company the value but as we consider the said company as the tools and instruments of oppression in the hands of the government and the cause of the present distress it is the opinion of this meeting that the people of these colonies should forbear all further dealings with them by refusing to purchase their merchandise until that peace safety and good order which they have disturbed be perfectly restored and that all tea now in this colony or which shall be imported into it shipped before the first day of september next should be deposited in some storehouse to be appointed by the respective committees of each county until a sufficient sum of money be raised by subscription to reimburse the owners the value and then to be publicly burnt and destroyed and if the same is not paid for and destroyed as aforesaid that it remain in the custody of the said committees at the risk of the owners until the act of parliament imposing a duty upon tea for raising a revenue in america be repealed and immediately afterwards be delivered unto the several proprietors thereof their agents or attorneys resolved that nothing will so much contribute to defeat the pernicious designs of the common enemies of great britain and her colonies as a firm union of the latter who ought to regard every act of violence or oppression inflicted upon any one of them as aimed at all and to effect this desirable purpose that a congress should be appointed to consist of deputies from all the colonies 
to concert a general and uniform plan for the defense and preservation of our common rights, and continuing the connection and dependence of the said colonies upon Great Britain under a just, lenient, permanent, and constitutional form of government. Resolved that our most sincere and cordial thanks be given to the patrons and friends of liberty in Great Britain for their spirited and patriotic conduct in support of our constitutional rights and privileges, and their generous efforts to prevent the present distress and calamity of America. Resolved that every little jarring interest and dispute which hath ever happened between these colonies should be buried in eternal oblivion, that all manner of luxury and extravagance ought immediately to be laid aside as totally inconsistent with the threatening and gloomy prospect before us, that it is the indispensable duty of all the gentlemen and men of fortunes to set examples of temperance, fortitude, frugality, and industry, and give every encouragement in their power, particularly by subscriptions and premiums, to the improvement of arts and manufactures in America, that great care and attention should be had to the cultivation of flax, cotton, and other materials for manufactures, and we recommend it to such of the inhabitants as have large stocks of sheep to sell to their neighbors at a moderate price as the most certain means of speedily increasing our breed of sheep and quantity of wool. Resolved that until American grievances be redressed by restoration of our just rights and privileges, no goods or merchandise whatsoever ought to be imported into this colony, which shall be shipped from Great Britain or Ireland after the first day of September next, except linens not exceeding 15 pence per yard, coarse woolen cloth not exceeding two shillings sterling per yard, nails, wire, and wire cards, needles, and pins, paper, saltpeter, and medicines, which may be imported until the first day of September, 1776. And if any goods or merchandise other than those hereby accepted should be shipped from Great Britain after the time aforesaid to this colony, that the same immediately upon their arrival should either be sent back again by the owners, their agents or attorneys, or stored and deposited in some warehouse to be appointed by the committee for each respective county, and there kept at the risk and charge of the owners to be delivered to them when a free importation of goods hither shall again take place, and that the merchants and vendors of goods and merchandise within this colony ought not to take advantage of our present distress, but continue to sell the goods and merchandise which they now have, or which may be shipped to them before the first day of September next, at the same rates and prices they have been accustomed to do within one year last past. And if any person shall sell such goods on any other terms than above expressed, that no inhabitant of this colony should, at any time forever thereafter, deal with him his agent, factor, or storekeeper, for any commodity whatsoever.